Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the narrative lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecke. And I'm Christopher Fan Kaufman. Hey, this is the podcast for January 28th, 2024. And it's Mark 5, 21 through 43. A couple stories here, the story of uh, Jairus' daughter and the story of the woman with the hemorrhage. Um, moving from last week, we were in the first part of Mark 5, where Jesus had crossed to the other side of the Sea of Galilee to the country of the Gerasenes. And uh, there, uh, as, the, as the herd of swine indicates, he is not in Jewish territory. But he's crossed back now. So the first line is, when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, and now just so you know, we are again in Jewish territory, one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus uh, came, and that's when the action gets going. Yeah, and as you noted, we have two stories here. This is a a little of what we call a frame tale, which is you have a story that starts with one character, and then there is intervening action in the middle, and then it returns to that character. And so, again, it, these stories frame each other. And because of that, we want to ask, what do they have in common? What is Mark trying to uh, put together to show us by, instead of telling them one after the other, telling them in this frame? It's not just that they're female characters with the number 12 in common. Well, that's one thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> two things. <laughs> yeah, at least two things. Well, faith saves them. Mm-hmm. And of course, you're going to tell us what that means. <laughs> and I pass it over to Catherine. What does it mean that faith saves them? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, uh, yeah, so they're both uh, female um, people, uh, a women, a, a girl and a woman in need of healing. Uh The first one, uh, not just uh, in need of healing, but uh, in need of being raised uh, from death, right? So why do you make a commotion and weep that – oh, sorry. Uh, They they tell Jesus eventually don't come uh, because she's already died. Uh, And then he says, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead but sleeping. Um, the 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 first uh, woman uh, um, has a hemorrhage for uh, twelve years, and uh, she's the one who seeks out Jesus uh, and touches him. I always think it's an interesting statement of Jesus in verse thirty. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, "Who touched my clothes?" And his disciples say, what are you talking about? Look at the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? But there is is a a power that uh, that drives out uh, the the illness and the uncleanness. Of course, famously, um, the uh, uh, being uh, in a state of of hemorrhaging uh, or of a constant... Menstrual flow uh, makes that woman unclean, um, which is not to say sinful. I think every time we talk about uncleanness, we have to remember that uncleanness does not equate with sin. Sin causes uncleanness, but most uncleanness is not the result of sin. It's the result of just normal bodily activities and normal uh, everyday uh, activities. But in this case, of course, this is not normal. This is... um, this uh, is making her weak. It's it, it drains her life force. It drains her finances because she's been looking, um, or going to uh, many physicians, and none of them have been able to heal her. And so finally, she takes the initiative and uh, and touches Jesus' uh, robe. But just the uh, she says, "If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well." So that's part of faith, right? That, yeah. <laughs> that she t- she trusts that. Uh, that Jesus is able to heal her, and not and and even you might say secretively, like she she's not even she doesn't even approach him and talk to him immediately. She uh, simply touches him, and so that that certainly is part of faith, uh, trusting that Jesus has the power to heal. Yeah, and I think along with that, with both the characters we see, so with Jairus himself, and then also with the woman, we see faith in the face of what seems to be insurmountable odds. 12 years, doctors can't do anything, 
no money left, all was growing worse. But the faith that in this person, Jesus, things will change. And we see uh, when we get to Jairus' house, when we get to that part that you talked about, the wailing and the weeping, and the fact that the people in the house think it's over, that there mm -hmm. is no continuation of the story because Jesus didn't get there in time. And this is where Jesus says, do not fear, only believe. And so we have the very interesting thing that it is Jairus and his uh, wife, the parents of the daughter who is uh, raised from the dead, who are asked to believe, mm. not the daughter herself, which I think is an interesting point. So I think in the other synoptics, uh, it's the hem of his garment or the tassel. Here it's just clothes, but I, I raise the issue. Um, in theory, this is um, it. It also emphasizes the Jewishness of Jesus. That this would be the 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 Jewish. I don't can't remember the term. The and, tassels. You mean the, of the of the, the fringes. The fringes. Yep. Of the, the, yeah. Which are there? Was six hundred thirteen uh, of them? Correct, Catherine. Uh, I don't remember. That could be. Yeah. To to uh, symbolize the number of commandments in the, in the Torah. In the Torah. Yeah. And so, I think it emphasizes again the Jewishness of Jesus, which is always worth just emphasizing, even though that detail isn't here. Um, so the first, you get this you get this nice juxtaposition. My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her. And then the woman just says, if I but touch his clothes. Uh, and, and I'm just looking for the exact term again. So you get, you know, the one is desiring Jesus to touch the daughter and she actually touches again and so you get this um i think it's a artistic juxtaposition it's a story well told mm -hmm. now in verse 34 it says daughter your faith has made you well go in peace be healed of your disease and again this is what i already said the word made you well is uh actually so so yep. uh, to be saved and it's in the past it's it's a complete act yeah it's actually a perfect verb so something which we want to go back in greek we talk about the perfects are actions that happen in the past with present effect so this is a great example of that you your faith has saved you yeah mm. you have the past effect the healing but the continued present state of uh, as jesus says go in peace and so i think that that's a great example of where a little bit of that grammatical knowledge, that verbal knowledge, can see how this is not something that just happened at one point in this woman's life. But Mark intends us to see it as uh, having an ongoing effect on the way that she then goes forth and goes in peace. So we see in Jesus here, uh, for lack of a better term, a kind of life force, right, mm -hmm. uh, that works against disease, uh, even long-standing uh, disease of the body uh, and against death itself. Uh, and uh, when these various uh, people in the narrative approach him, uh, they recognize that power in him. Uh, and so uh, Jairus uh, comes uh, on behalf of his little daughter and uh, and begs Jesus to uh, to, to come and heal her. And then the woman, the unnamed woman suffering from the hemorrhage also recognizes that life force and approaches Jesus. And it's it's uh, similar, I, I think, uh, in the uh, in the previous story, right? Uh, when Jesus is battling not disease and death, but um, demons, right? Uh, and drives out those, uh, that uncleanness, that evil, you could say in that, uh, in that story. Um, there's there's a kind of uh, I don't know an unstoppable force here, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and Jesus is revealed more and more as um, as Messiah, as Son of God. Uh, we'll be talking about that in a couple of weeks when we get to the Transfiguration and when Jesus says, you know, who do people say that I am? But there's there's just a you know evidence building uh, and these stories uh, that that. Proclaim Jesus as uh, on God's side, as 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 
uh, God's uh, life uh, moving into the world to drive out sickness and death yeah. and uncleanness. Another thing I was thinking about with the cloak, so again, when you're talking about kind of reinforcing Jesus' Jewishness, I think with the cloak and then again with the healing of Jairus' daughter, we also have some resonances with the prophet Elijah, who mm. raises the widow's son with somewhat similar actions in terms of taking the son by the hand and raising him up. And then you also have the cloak of the prophet Elijah has really his mantle and uh, Kings has this where it's not that the woman actually touches Jesus himself, as you pointed out, she touches mm. his clothes. So there's even something, you know, if this were the fifties, we would talk about Jesus as being radioactive in that way, mm. that, that kind of, it emanates from him and that his cloak, even his clothes are, um, have these powers. So that was one of the things that came up to me as well. I think in closing that um, I want to say something about faith. Um, daughter, your your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And I think the thing is that, um, and then it turns into um, faith. What is faith? I think we sometimes, you know, uh, argue that Jesus says in verse 34, your faith has saved you. And then in 36, do not fear, only believe, same word. It's the verbal form of it um, from pistis, pistis due, that it's trust. And trust is the way that one receives God's power. God's power, whether it's of a promise or, uh, or the work of grace, is uh, it can only be received by trust. And so to emphasize, especially in our culture where we've turned faith into intellectual consent, uh, to, to broaden it for folks that um, when we say formulas like justified by faith, it's, it's that's the thing that receives a promise.